previous session we learned about how to create a storage and what is a file system and how to create a virtual v switch how the network traffic is going to flow from virtual machines to outside world what are the components are required and this session we are going to discuss about uh, how creating a virtual machine creating a virtual hard disk and then creating a data store and creating virtual switch what are the components are required in this session what i'm going to do is whatever the esx have host available on our lab on this particular lab on this particular virtual machine i'm going to create two hard disk and two more video nics so that how to create a data store how to create a virtual switch we are going to see okay so open vmware workstation right click on this uh, vmware esx server 6.0 go to settings what i'm going to do here i'm going to add a two hard disks okay click on add hard disk select hard disk okay next okay see next next give it uh, 10 gb finish one more hard disk with 15 gb and add additional nic cards add click on add select near network card network adapter next finish add one more yeah so we created the three network cards how many disks are available three hard disks are available three nic cards are available this is a virtual machine on top of vmware workstation what we are going to do with this we are going to work on under configuration tab we are going to work on storage storage adapters networking and network adapters click ok and see connect to vc client connect to vc client for this esxr host go to configuration tab okay come down what we are going to do is we need to first we need to identify how many devices are available in previous session we noticed that only one device is available to the skc controller now we are going to see how many disk controllers are how many disks are available to the storage we can storage adapters storage adapters storage adapters yes select vm hba1 skcy yes see here it is not showing devices actually we added two more devices it is not showing the devices so for that we are going to reboot this particular esx host and see make sure those devices are attached to this particular system check the network adapters add two more network adapters to the system those network adapters are available or not even network adapters also not visible so what we are going to do we are going to reboot this particular esx host and see how many disks are visible how many network cards are available right click on the esx host reboot yes click okay so in this session what we are going to do first we are going to look at the storage 
what why the storage is required as per previous session storage is required to build virtual machines virtual machines are nothing but it is a kind of files it is a software emulation software files it has to store some some place what we are going to establish that particular place by creating a file system once file system is created what we are going to do is we are going to create a data store once we create a data store we are going to establish how to create a virtual machine once virtual machine is created it is going to store the files where it is going to store the files in the form of files under respective data store so as present at present we just completed the esxr host installation and there are resources are available cpu is available memory is available and what else we need storage and networking once storage and networking is ready we are ready to proceed with deploying creating a new virtual machines why we are creating the esxi host to deploy virtual machines to deploy virtual machines what are the required components we are going to establish those components by doing all this setup first thing storage after that networking without storage without networking we cannot create a virtual machine let me show you that before creating a data store before creating a data store am i able to create a virtual machine or not let's see that option as well this navigation we have to click enough where to go how to go and all those things select vmhbs kisi see how many devices are presented see previously it is those devices three it is showing now okay that in the sense we had we added three two more hard disk for this particular system so it is visible now check the network adapters here also it is showing the network adapters that is fine here you notice one thing here what you notice here you notice out of three nic cards only one nic card assigned to one virtual switch there are two nic cards which are not assigned to any of the switch see switch tab nothing assigned to this so we are going to do that how to create a virtual switch how to map that virtual switch to outside physical port of the esxr host here the physical port is nothing but what are the nic ports are available what is the nic it is showing here the what are the physical ports are available it is going to show as a vm nic 0 vm nic 1 vm nic 2 what are the nic cards are available it is going to show as a vm nic and respect to number okay go back to the storage now we are going to see am i able to create a vm why we are creating why we deployed esxr host right click on the esxr host see here the option is new virtual machine we are going to create a new virtual machine create a new virtual machine select select custom let me show you what is the importance and what is why we need a storage okay next just give the name test what is showing select a destination storage for this virtual machine file is there any storage available is it showing anything here what we need to do virtual machine creation is nothing but it is going to create a files if we need to provide a path in windows we are need to copy a file means destination some folder will be there some location should be there if the destination location is not available i cannot do any action here i am going to create a virtual machine to create a virtual machine what it is asking
what it is asking here select a destination see here select a destination store is for the file virtual machine files i need to create a storage currently there is no storage available if the storage is not available i cannot deploy virtual machines so that's the reason whatever the disk is available is it a local disk or is it a sand disk or it is a network attached storage device whatever the device we are going to use that particular device and create a data store how we are going to create a data store with the help of vmfs file system okay so let's do it without storage i am not in a position to proceed next also no so storage is important deploying esxi host is not going to sufficient we need to create storage and networking also both the things then five components five important components motherboard cpu pro memory storage and networking these five components are should be ready to create a virtual machine click cancel go to storage so st storage and storage adapters storage and storage adapters is storage adapter is belongs to it is going to show you how what are the controllers are available to this particular esxi host and how many devices are attached to this particular esxi host so if you want to check the physical devices what are the control what are the devices attached you have to click on storage adapters if you want to create a storage if you want to create a data store then you need to click on storage now what is the purpose of now we need you are going to we are going to create a data store how we are going to create let's see click on that storage under storage there are different options are available what are the options are available here data store here data store devices if you select devices it is going to show you the same thing how many devices are available okay it is going to just going to list the devices to create a data store you should be in a data store tab you need to click on data store make sure it is going to click on data store tab and there is an options are available you can refresh if it is not visible anything or you can click on add storage add storage and rescan all what is a rescan all if the device is not visible the generally in enterprise environment the san team or nas team going to sns storage but the devices are not going to visible then we are going to refresh or rescan all so once we do rescan or refresh the devices are going to be visible so we already rebooted the es6 servers there is no necessity we already verified how many devices are available okay so we are going to proceed with create a data store to create a data store we should be under storage under then data store under then we need to click on this particular add storage click on add storage once we click on add storage this is wizard it is going to start in this particular wizard see there are two options are available what is two options create a data store a fiber channel or iskc or local skc disk or amount existing vmfs volume anything i need to select storage type what type of storage type is it a san is it a nas is it a local storage and the second option is network file system choose this option if you want to create a network file system network file system in the sense the nas filer we call it as if you are going to share the unis unis unc path unc path in the sense double slash server ip address server name slash the path the nas filer it is going to share okay if you are having a nas storage nas storage then we need to go with the second option centralized storage what are the options centralized storage you are going to achieve for your organization you need to select if it is sand disk you need to go with first option 
If it is a NAS storage, you need to go with the second option. What are the option? You can go with Google and understand what internet search. You can understand how to create a NAS network file system on ESX servers. The clear KB article available, it is going to show you how to do step by step in VC client and web client. Go to connect to ESXI host, go click on configuration tab, click on storage, click on add storage, and select network file system. Everything will be there step by step. KB article, what KB article for VMware website KB article? That is kb.vmware.com. Whatever the search you are going to do, internet for VMware related, if the article, if the knowledge base article provides information, that site information should be kb.vmware.com. It is must and should. Okay. Now we are going to create, we already created a local storage, local disk. Now we are going to use local disk to create a data store. Now select next. See, there are three disks are available. Okay, what is the size? One is 2 GB, one is 10 GB, one is 15 GB. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select a 2 GB disk. You might have a doubt like what is this 2 GB we already load in an operating system? What is that? Uh, where it is and how it happens? The thing is that ESXi host installation, it is going to take separate file system to store the files. It is a kind of Linux file system, Linux proprietary file system. It is going to format it a EXT file system. That is a different in advanced topic, advanced troubleshooting options. We are going to see what is the file system it is going to create. What is a system operating system related files where it is going to store what if any issue comes in picture how to troubleshoot now whatever the 2gb we allocated the 2gb is available for to create a file system to create a virtual machines either we can create use local storage or we are going to create 10 gb which i created okay just proceed next with the 2gb let's see what is going to happen see here it is going to select the disk what is the partition format it is going to use we learned about uh, MBR and GPT, master boot record and GPT partition layout. Where is that partition layout? See what is the partition layout it is using? It is not required to understand. Just I'm showing what is the partition format, what is the format it is going to doing this. See here, partition format. What is the partition format? Here it is there primary partitions come down see here it is already created a file system with this particular file system remaining free space available on this particular 2gb what did happen at 2gb what are the 2gb it is we are already allocated to the system out of 2gb it is going to see already this particular partition it is already created what it is uses where it is gone and everything it is see here mbr it is located loaded with operating system files in this particular partition now what is the free space available out of 2 gb it is available only 1.2 gb 1.12 gb this is a space it is available to create a file system for to store the virtual machines the operating system it is already loaded it is already copied to the primary partition what is that primary partition it is created with mbr partition and some files are loaded there so out of 2 gb what is the file system is available now only 1.12 gb it is going to format with the what is the file system there are two types of partition layouts mbr and gpt now whatever the file systems are loaded it is in mbr partition whatever the data store we are going to create it is going to format the partition in gpt layout okay going further next and see next
see android data store name just name it data store any name you can give it the so to understand what is this data store what i'm going to do is here this is a local storage what i'm going to mention local storage local storage one local storage one that is a data store name you can name it any one if it is a fiber channel what i'm going to in uh, enterprise environment how we are going to do is we are going to create a data store by reflecting that name that particular data store where it is coming is it a local storage is it a SAN storage or is it a NAS storage so how the name is going to reflect in enterprise environment uh, for example production this server is going this particular data store is going to host production vms so that we are going to create a data store production data store san coming from some storage it is where from where the storage is coming san storage and followed by some naming convention okay so what it, you can give any name but it is always best to keep it in a small letters why small letters why uh, capital letters because sometimes we are going to execute command line execution if you are while executing command line what is going to happen is we need to mention a command lines execution in the command line execution it's a command so linux command that esx host command line is case sensitive so it is easy to mention in a small letters if you are forget what is a small letter what is a capital letter while executing the command you are going to local storage for example you are going to type local storage here all are small letters while executing on the command line, if you mention L as in capital, S as in capital letter, the command is not going to recognize. So whatever the letters we are going to, characters we are going to use, make sure only certain format so that it is easy for administrative task. Okay, this particular command line utilities are case sensitive. So be careful while assigning the name in enterprise environment. Follow the some standard practice to create names and perform that administrative task. Okay, click next. See here, what is the maximum available? So I can segregate, I can create a space, partition space out of 1 GB is 1.2 GB is available. I can create a space 500 MB like that. But in enterprise environment, whatever the lens we are going to deploy, what are the storage we are going to use? We are going to use maximum. For example, uh, in a specific environments, 2 TB storage, 2 TB LAN, LAN in the sense logical unit number. If it is coming from SAN, we are going to call it as a LAN. So 2 TB LAN, 4 TB LAN, like that. What is the maximum size it can support? I am going to show you one KB article wherein you can search v, v sphere maximas. What is vSphere Maximas? Search internet vSphere Maximas for 6.4, vSphere Maximas for 6.5, vSphere Maximas for 6.7. In this particular, there is a PDF file you are going to get. You are going to get a PDF file. In that PDF file, that particular version compatibility, how many virtual machines it can, it can support, what is the disk it can support, what is the storage it can support? All information will be available in vSphere Maximas. This is also one more important interview question. What is if you are using if you are using 6.0 version, if you are using 6.7 version, you should understand the basic limitations. What is the limitations? So here we are going to create a data store. And what is the data store limitation? We can ask storage team to assign. 60 TB LAN, but we should understand is that particular version supports 60 TB LAN or not. Okay, so generally in enterprise environment for better performance and other things, they are going to follow standard practice either 1 TB LAN or 2 TB LAN or 4 TB like that. They are not going to use 60 TB and what are the maximum it supports. Okay, so there are going to probably we need to consider all parameters. Okay, now proceed next. We are not going to resize in an enterprise environment. What are the sizes available? We are going to use maximum allocated space. 
that's the reason i am not choosing the second option so maximum available space click next this capacity value must be at least 1.3 we say enter where what is that meaning i told you there is a limitation minimum limitation maximum limitation to create a data store what is the minimum requirement it is minimum 1.3 gb should be there to create a data store that is a limitation so what we need to do we cannot create with this 1.12 gb disk so what we need to select we need to select another hard disk to create a data store so why i am going to show you here what is a limitation minimum limitation and maximum limitation you should understand before creating a data store click close and cancel proceed from click add storage again what we need to select we created two data stores okay two disk okay add storage click on add storage disk only we are going to do two disks are available one 10 gb one 15 gb we are going to select 10 gb and proceed with the rest of the things next select 10 gb next see here previously the partition format layout it is not available previously it is already created mbr and it is available it is going to create a different partition gpt now it is a raw disk that's the reason it is not created any file system on this particular hard disk it's just a raw disk and that's the reason it is not showing anything here so once we create it and how it is going to show you we'll see a partition will be created and used we are going to create a partition what partition we'll see next local store is one next maximum 10 gb space and we are not going to resize next finish see select that particular storage underneath you can see this uh, file system information what is the file system information you can drag this option little below drag there is arrow will come drag that information yeah okay no problem location what is the location what is the information what is the file system weight fixed vmware volume label local storage yeah, come down little bit see here what is a block size what is a formatting file system what is a file system it is going to show you here vmfs5 previous session we discussed we learned about file system versions there are two file system versions we came across vmfs3 and vmfs5 you need to understand what is a compatible file system in vsphere 6.7 7.4 this is the version it is running on 6.0 it is already end of support so we need to understand what is the file system in 6.7 7.0 okay there are different file systems available you need to understand what exact version this particular version vmfs 5.6.1 this particular 5. Dot next next two digit it is going to value different numbers it is going to come into picture according to the update version also update what is update patch level if you are going to 6.0 update one the file system may be vms 5.3.434 something so according to the version according to the patch level this vmfs file version is going to change okay so basically at the border view we are going to say that it is a vmfs file system okay what is a block size this is one mb block size and all those things comes in picture in earlier version vmfs3 there will be an option to choose the block level according to block level what is a partition layout it can support if you choose different blocks levels are available 
if you choose different blocks level it is going to support the maximum size and minimum size to create a partition layout so we are ready to deploy virtual mission now before deploying a virtual mission we need to make sure create a networking so you understand that how to create a data store how, what is the importance of creating data store without creating data store you are not in a position to create a virtual missions why we are going to create a virtual missions to optimize the server performances optimization of the resources why we are using virtualization layer to optimize the resources to optimize the resources i am going to use one physical server and going to deploy a number of virtual missions to deploy number of virtual missions what i need to make sure i should have a storage is it a local storage or it is a centralized storage it is up to your organization requirement okay now storage is ready data store is ready now next step is we are going to see networking before going to networking we will add one more storage click on add storage that 15 gb is also proceed to create add storage here again it is showing two disks but uh, we already discussed that 2 gb is not compatible why it is not compatible it is not for uh, me following minimum requirements that's the reason we are not in a position to use the 2 gb disk okay next give some name and uh, click Next, finish. So we, we are ready with the two palm data stores. Here I'm calling as a data store. In Windows operating system, we call it as a drive letter, C drive, D drive. Here, while working on ESXi file system, now we can say that how many data stores are available. I can say number of data store. What are the names, names of data stores? We can come to picture, we can know that, okay? now. Networking. How many network adapters are available? Click on network adapters. See three NICs are available, out of which already VM NIC is assigned to vSwitch0. Okay, what is a vSwitch0? We are going to see the properties of vSwitch0. How it is vSwitch? What is the importance of vSwitch? How the packet is going to travel? to from the ESXi host virtualization layer to outside world, how it is mapping, all those things we are going to see by looking at the networking tab. Networking, select networking. See here, there is a logical link. I told you in previous session, we discussed about already logical link. See, this is a physical adapter, right? This is a physical adapter. This is particular virtual switch. This particular one is a vSwitch 0. vSwitch 0, what happens? There are, what is this? See here, port group. What is a port group? One is VM network. Another one is management network. That in the sense, the switch is available and this particular virtual switch is assigned to one physical port of the ESXi host. So this VM network port group is ready. Port group is ready. Now what I can do, I can create a virtual missions and attach to connect to this particular port group so that the virtual mission can send the packet from the inside to this particular outside to this particular channel to reach the outside physical port so once this physical port is received this physical nick card port is connected to any switch outside so how can i say this particular nick card as a uplink now whatever the nick card it attached to the switch we are going to say this it is uplink port Uplink, why I'm calling as uplink port? Because it is connecting inside virtual, virtualization layer. Inside virtualization layer, one switch is there. What is that switch? Virtual switch. From that virtual switch, I am connecting to the outside world a physical switch. 
how I am going to connect? Inside, it is a logical link. We are assuming that it is a logical link. Logical link is nothing but one cable will be there and connected to respective switch. And outside, if you come to outside, what do we need to do? We need to take one patch cable and insert the patch cable one end to this particular NIC port and the other end we are going to connect to physical switch. So it is establishing communication between virtual switch to physical switch. So whatever the port is establishing communication, that port I'm going to call it as a uplink port. Okay. So what is a NIC? We have three NICs are available. Out of three NICs, one NIC is already assigned to that what is a NIC VM NIC 0. Now I am going to see what is this switch properties. Here there are two options are available. Properties, remove, and here there is a refresh, add networking, and properties. This property is different and this property is different. Okay, so what we are going to do, if you want to create a new virtual switch, I need to click on add networking. To create a new switch, I need to click on add networking. To see existing switch properties, what is the switch, how many ports are available, what is the policies are available, I can click on this particular properties tab for this particular switch. In this session, I am going to see what is the property, so what is the, how many ports are available for this particular existing switch. Whenever you complete the ESXM host installation, by default, it is going to create a virtual switch. Virtual switch, whatever the switch we are going to create, we are going to call it as a, what we are going to call vSphere standard switch, vSphere standard switch. There are two types are available switch types. We spare standard switch. Other one is distributed switch. We will talk about distributed switch later topic. Now, I told you just a V switch, virtual switch. What we are going to call it as a, it is a V spare standard switch. How many standard switches are available in our environment? Okay, this is a standard switch. We need to understand the points here. What are the points are available in this particular networking tab? Okay, how many switches are available? How many virtual switches are available? Okay, so I'm going to create, first I'm going to review existing switch properties. What is this switch? I haven't created this switch. How it become available? It is a default standard switch available while deploying ESXi host installation. Once ESXi host installation is done, what you did, you connected to DCUS screen, wherein you are going to assign an IP address. Why you are assigning an IP address? To establish and to connect this particular ESXi host through a client, either VC client or web client. To connect this ESXi host from a VC client or web client, what you need to access, you need to connect. So we need an IP address to establish communication. To perform all these administrative tasks, you need to access this EXI host. That's the reason we are assigned an IP address during the DCUI screen. Whatever the IP address you assigned there, that IP address we talk about, it is a management interface IP address. That IP address, see, what is IP address we assigned here? It is IP address assigned, right? If that IP address is 192.168.222.20. Whatever the IP address, as soon as the installation is completed, whatever the IP address you are assigning, that you are assigning IP address to this particular switch management interface. Then only you are able to connect this particular ESX host. That's the reason we are going to call it as it is a management network. Okay, so now proceed with click on properties and see what are the options are available. Click on properties, switch properties. Yes. So see here, there are different options are available. What is the options are available? Switch properties. I can see switch properties. 
How many ports are available? 120 ports are available. Generally, physical switch, what are the physical switch you notice? Maximum, maximum 48 ports only. But what is the maximum ports and virtual switch? I can create up to 4,000. We'll see how many ports we can create by going to, if you click on edit, if you click on edit, you can see how many ports. What is the ports requirement generally? The ports are required to collect virtual machines. How many virtual machines I can create for a ESX host? Even if it is a high-end, too high-end system also, I can create maximum 100 virtual machines. If I'm going to create maximum 100 virtual machines, maximum 100 ports are fine. But it is ports, it is a virtual switch. It is a software component. So the components available, I can create even 4,000 port, more than 4,000 ports. Uh, what is the maximum ports I can create? We'll see. Can I create 4,000 ports? I can create. What is the purpose of creating a virtual ports? To connect the virtual machines. Can I deploy 4,000 virtual machines on this single ESX servers? It is not. Theoretically, I can deploy. Practically, it is not possible. Why? That resources and the Fapon storage and all those three components are required to deploy. So this is how many ports are available currently and by default it is going to create by default with 120 ports by default. If it is an older version, so previous version by default, how many ports as soon as you create a virtual switch, how many ports it is going to create, we'll see. By default eight ports, if I'm not wrong, we'll see that. See. What is the port groups available? There are two ports groups created. One is virtual machine port group and other one is management network port group. What is our two port groups? Port groups, I told you, what is the purpose of port group? While discussing a networking concepts, I told you port group. Port group is nothing but in a virtual switch, if I have 48 ports or 12 ports, how many ports are available? Out of those ports, I am going to use certain ports I'm going to use for some purpose. Certain ports I'm going to use for other purpose. For example, in a physical environment, I have in a room wherein the room is connected 10 systems. Five systems are finance related, five systems are related to HR related. The packet is traveled to initially it has travel only finance. That's the reason we are going to create a port, port group so that the packet travels how can I create a port group? By naming convention, I can understand how the system is going to understand the VLAN concept, virtual LAN concept, VLAN ID concept comes in. That is a port group. Don't confuse port group. The port group we are going to create to segregate the virtual machines. What virtual machine to connect where? If I'm going to create 10 virtual machines on this particular ESX host, out of 10 virtual machines, Five virtual machines are related to finance. Five virtual machines are related to HR. So I need to create two port groups. How to create a port groups? I'm going to show you. So finance port group and HR port group. So whatever the virtual machine I'm going to deploy, that virtual machine, if it is finance related, I'm going to attach that finance virtual machine to this finance port group. I'm going to show you how to create a port group, how to create a virtual switch. For first understanding, this is a properties, how to edit, how to add, and all those things. Here, one more thing, network adapters. I can see network adapters for this virtual switch. This virtual switch, what is the outbound traffic, how it is going? For any switch, what are the switch you are going to create? I need to make sure one physical port, at least one physical port should be assigned to this particular switch. Okay, so what are the switch and all those things we are going to see. These are the security policies. By default, what is the policies? You can come go through the internet and such understanding what is this. I'm not going to discuss about these points. Okay, there are certain requirements wherein we need to choose, we need to change switch properties to perform this particular three functions. Okay, Promicus mode, MAC address change, post transmit, all those things. By default, we are not going to search, touch this information. At a specific requirements, you can edit this information. 
if we go if you are working some troubleshooting options then they'll say that make sure prometheus mode in accept position then you can go to this particular position go to edit and change this reject to accept okay this is a policies what is advanced properties mtu size mtu size this all the things i can change by looking at this particular switch click on edit what i'm going to do click on edit for a virtual switch it is selected virtual switch port number so i can see okay click on edit the session will disconnect in three minutes no problem again tomorrow we are going to discuss about more on networking we'll create a tomorrow the switch switch okay see here drop down net number of ports How many ports we can create? 4,088 ports we can create. Creating a ports doesn't matter. But while you are creating a ports, we need to make sure those many virtual machines I am going to deploy. That's the reason I'm going to create ports. If I have system in my room, if 10 systems are there in that room, how many switches are available? How many ports are required? A small switch is required, which is having 12 ports. I can arm say connect 10 virtual 10 systems to that switch. So how many ports are required? It is all your administrative task. How many systems I'm going to deploy on this particular ESXi host? According to that, and you can choose find shown. Okay, this is a port information. Okay, cancel, not cancel. See here, MTU, advanced properties. Yeah, I can change, but I'm not going to change this MTU option. What is MTU and what is the requirement to change this configuration, we will see. You can search internet. Click on security tab. These are the policies. If you want to change the accept to reject, reject to accept, you can drop down and change the option. Okay. By default, we are going to leave it as a default options. Okay. Click on traffic shaping. Status, what is the access bandwidth? I can control the bandwidth also. I can, what is the packet travels, bus size, and all those things. We are going to leave it as a default. We are not going to change. Even enterprise environment also, we are not going to change all these settings. It is leave with a default. In some, some conditions, in few conditions, we are going to change these points in according to the application requirements. Okay, so NIC teaming. What is a NIC teaming? Click on NIC teaming tab. Here, the NIC teaming, I told you redundant, redundant. What is a redundant? If one port is failed, for whatever the switch we are going to assign, max, minimum, for redundancy purpose, we are going to assign two NICs, so that even one NIC is failed, one NIC port is damaged, so that I can communicate with other port. It could be patch cable issue. It could be network cable issue network port issue, or it could be outside physical switch issue. Anything can happen. So how to make a redundancy for this virtual switch? For this virtual switch, there are 10 virtual machines are going to connect. All those 10 virtual machine traffic should not have a single point of failure. For that, I should have a redundancy at the network ports, where the network ports are available on the physical ESXi host. ESXi host, should how many NIC ports should be available for better practice? There are eight ports should be available in enterprise environment. We are going to see how we can do the configuration. Okay, I'm going to close this session now. Tomorrow, tomorrow session, we are going to discuss more about creating a virtual switch and changing the properties. Okay, bye, bye for the day.